Jordan Stacy. Let's see. So I have been asking people in my life this would you rather question over the past couple of months and it has been very divisive between men and women. And the question is, would you rather you cannot have a significant other ever again for the rest of your life, but you get to maintain and keep all of your platonic friendships and you can make new friends or you can have a significant other, but no more platonic connections. And it's implied in the question that it's like a really functional relationship with your significant other. So it's like the love of your life, your soulmate, and you can still have family either way, but it's basically friends or partnership. And almost every single straight man that I have asked this question has selected significant other and no friendships. And almost every single woman or AFAB person that I've asked this question has said, friendship and I think that this speaks absolute volumes about the epidemic of loneliness amongst men and the lack of fulfillment that men get from their friendships specifically their male friendships as a result of the patriarchy so I love when girls start rationalizing things they have no idea about okay I'll tell you why the majority of guys answer significant other because they don't know what it's like to have a significant other that's why okay the other reason is, is they look at women as if they're some sort of special, beautiful, the answer to all of their problems. Their life would just be a little bit better if they had a significant other in their life. That's why most guys will answer this. It is not for the right reason they're answering that question in that way. It has nothing to do with the patriarchy. They simply lack the ability to have a girlfriend. The majority of guys have a really hard time getting a girlfriend, so they feel that they're missing out on something. This is why they're answering this way. Meanwhile, the reason why girls answer that they'd rather have girlfriends than a significant other, as such as a man, is because girls have been conditioned now that men serve X purpose. And that purpose being, essentially a girl's expectation is that a guy needs to be subservient to her. And the overwhelming percentage of men won't be subservient to women. And if they are, they're still unsatisfied because deep down, subconsciously, they still don't want that. So girls don't know what they want. Girls are always going to answer this question emotionally, just like most guys are going to answer emotionally. So the results of this are completely stupid in reality, right? And the way that this girl decides to rationalize this is honestly laughable. Somehow, it's still the patriarchy's fault that guys want a significant other over their friends because in reality, most guys are stupid. They don't know what they're missing out on. They put girls on a pedestal. So they think that they really want a woman until they open their eyes. They realize what actually comes with the territory of having a woman. And then they change their mind. If you ask me, for example, I would never say I'd rather have a girlfriend over my friends. No, because the reality that I've experienced, obviously, and most guys that have been through a few things will have experienced the same thing. Girls are more of a responsibility than a reward. This is overwhelmingly the case. Whenever you take a girl in, you're doing a lot more for them than they're doing for you, at least in a modern context. So why would I choose that over my friends who are never going to leave my side, right? Once you get to a position of abundance, you start to realize what's actually rare. Good quality male friends are harder to come by than girls. You can only see this from a position of abundance. Percentage of men that actually have that abundance that can accurately gauge that is like maybe five to 10% at most. And I'm probably being a little bit conservative with that. So the truth is most guys can't answer this survey properly. It has nothing to do with the patriarchy. Let's continue. Some time now, I have been of the opinion that for the most part, to be a man is to experience a lot of loneliness, especially an Australian man, because Australia has this culture of aloofness where vulnerability is really hard to maintain in platonic connections, especially without alcohol and especially in connections between men. I've asked a lot of my male friends and just men in general, if they say I love you to each other, if they say I love you to their male friends, and a lot of the time their answer is no. Or I am so sick and tired of women putting female standards onto men. I am sick and tired of it. They are trying so hard to force us to be women. When are women going to understand that we don't get the same fulfillment from the same things as they do? Okay, when we tell our friends, I love you. We don't get that same tingly feeling on the inside. Now, oh, we feel loved and heard. We don't only look at life from the perspective of the fantasy, right? So when our friend tells us he loves us, it doesn't have that same feeling, right? Because we look at actions more than we look at words, right? 
So when a, our friend does something for us, we take that as a signal that he cares for us. We don't care that much about the useless words because anyone can say things. A lot of people say words. Words don't mean that much, right? Because people lie most of the time. The truth is actions matter, right? So we as men, we respect actions way more than we respect words. This idea of guys, you know, talking emotionally to one another is going to be the solution to our loneliness problem is absolutely not true. And it's just female projection. Some girl, like thousands of them now feels that she has the answer to all of male problems. You guys should say you love each other more. That will solve the problem. I mean, it's just so incredibly low IQ and so incredibly uninsightful. And yet these girls actually think that they have the answer to the problem. I just, um, I just, the hubris is out of this world and it will never end. So more of this to come, but you know, at some point I, I do get a little bit tired of it, right? They don't really talk about anything deep or anything vulnerable. And this is not exactly news. This isn't a profound take. Like I think everyone knows that men do not connect as closely with each other as non-men do. But the fact that the disparity between platonic fulfillment in men and platonic fulfillment in women is so stark that men are opting to not have friendships and instead get everything out of a partner. But women are feeling so much more fulfilled by their platonic connections that they are opting to forego having a significant other. It's just really interesting to me and I feel like it proves how much of a problem this is because it's not like it's most of the men that I asked and most of the women and non-men that I asked. It's almost like 100% each way. As I've mentioned many times before, right? Men are being trained to be feminine, right? It's very hard to be friends with feminine men because it's all about emotions and not facts, right? As a guy, you want to be able to say something and have it be recognized without it always turning into an emotional battle. A lot of times guys have a hard time being friends because ego is so important to men, right? As a man, you're always battling on a hierarchy. So if you are temporarily, for example, below another guy, on the hierarchy, it can very easily turn into a situation where one guy really abuses the fact that he's higher than the other guy. Another guy can feel lesser, right? As a guy, it's really important that we don't feel lesser, especially around our friends. So it's hard for guys to maintain friendships when they're not at the same level, right? As guys are becoming more feminized, it's easier and easier for this ego to creep into the conversation and turn into a passive aggressive battle. I just think this conversation about the patriarchy contributing to male loneliness goes so much deeper than the idea of like, whether or not men would choose partnership or friendship. I think it's contributing to the rise of culture and I also feel like it's a huge reason why women feel like they have to teach their male partners because men aren't learning emotionally from their friends the way that women are women yeah it's another example of women projecting that more feminization is the answer when it's too much feminization guys are too feminized that's why culture exists because they don't want to compete they want to sit at home and do nothing because they don't feel that they have a place in the world Guys need to feel like they have a place in the world because as much as girls want to pretend and suck us into their fantasy, oh, oh, there is no competition. You don't have to compete. You just have to be happy and be more emotional. The reality behind being a male isn't the case. He tries to cry, tries to express his emotions, and quickly realizes that it puts him in a lower position on the totem pole. And no guy wants this. He'd rather just not cry and have a higher position, then cry and express the emotion and then be punished for it anyways. So it's better to just not. Girls don't have this experience because they're pretty much always in a position of abundance. They really do live in a fantasy world when it comes to the competitive nature of how things function. As a guy, you really are competing for a very small spot. And this is statistically proven. A minority of men get the opportunity to reproduce, whereas a majority of women have the opportunity to reproduce. And this isn't a secret. As much as this girl wants to pretend that it's so easy to just be emotional and solve our problems, the deep dark reality of it is we're in a stiff competition amongst each other. This is just the nature of the world. To find a group of friends that wants to contribute to your success while you help contribute to theirs is exceedingly difficult. Every guy wants to be the top dog, but not everybody can be the top dog at everything. So it becomes difficult. Egos will always get in the way eventually, at least for most guys. Do not just learn about deep emotional and vulnerable topics from their intimate partners and from their significant others. They also learn a lot from their friends. And I feel like men do not learn as much from their friends. So it also... 
This is simply not true. We learn a lot, practically speaking, from our friends. That's the whole point, okay? We get along through work, not through emotional bonding. Emotional bonding isn't as important to us because it doesn't provide practical value, okay? With girls, there's no practical value because their life isn't as practically oriented. It's more about how they feel, not what they have to do. In reality, there isn't a burden of performance on women like there is on men. For us, we have that burden of performance. So for us, the mushy topics don't give us anything unless it's practically based. This is just the cold, hard reality. And women won't understand this because they don't have that burden of performance. It's as simple as it gets. It puts a lot of pressure on women that are in straight relationships to emotionally uphold. And she's still playing the victim. The pressure is on them. It's, you just can't, you can't make this stuff up, guys. The pressure is still on women for them to teach men. I think you guys just need to learn how to back off and understand how men are. And that's what you guys aren't being taught because most of your guys' dad was whipped at home. That's the actual truth the connection because they have gained so much maturity and wisdom from their friendships and it leaves have you seen most girl conversations this girl lives in a total delusional fantasy i mean it's unbelievable most girl conversations are about entirely meaningless topics and they don't even follow logical flow it's all about the feels right you sit there and you listen to women talk it's almost always just about feelings that's what they get off on they hang out with each other to feel good not to have some crazy logical breakdowns and discuss the philosophy of the world and all these things. This is very rare topic matter for women. So this idea that women emotionally mature from having conversations with each other is, I mean, it's honestly like, it's laughable. It's men at a disadvantage when it comes to emotional maturity. Anyway, please answer this would you rather question. How much you want to bet that this girl has the opinion that girls have higher emotional intelligence than men? How much do you want to bet? Let me guess. Emotional intelligence is being able to express emotions, right? We're not going to get into the constant emotional up and downs that women have. No, no, no. That's emotional intelligence now. Not being able to control your emotions and expressing them whenever you feel them is now emotional intelligence. Restraining your emotions and outletting them or releasing them when it's appropriate, that's bottling emotions and that's patriarchy. The comments i want to gather more intel and i will come back with more thoughts yeah that's not intel this is just female pandering propaganda and projection there is not an ounce of value you provided to anybody you are just one of tens of thousands that will say the same thing as men decrease in quality and women allegedly increase in quality but their unhappiness keeps going up to close off on this giant yap session of nothing from this girl i'm just going to say it's so fascinating how the results aren't there. And instead of admitting, mm, maybe, maybe men are too feminized, she doubles down and says, no, more feminization is necessary to achieve the desired result. I mean, talk about, <laughs> talk about NPC behavior, honestly. If you like this video, like and subscribe. To see more of my private content, check the link in the description below.